head so that you don't ever forget. You kill or you die. This decade continued the cable trend and even introduced web-based original content that changed the way we view television. But that was a promise I couldn't keep. When deception cuts this deep, someone has to pay. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 memorable TV characters of the 2010s. For our series on the top 10 memorable TV characters per decade, we're looking at those characters that were critically and culturally significant and became synonymous with the 2010s TV culture. No, we did not approach the client. She approached us disappointed with your representation. To make the list, the shows had to have started in 2009 or later, as the characters in question would have made their impact in the 2010s. Blood spells, curses, shape-shifting, what do you think? I think you believe in what you see. Number 10. Melody, Melly Grant, Scandal. You know who you become. You're a big Jerry. Melly Grant, First Lady of the United States, is a cold and calculating woman, but one that has a heart and loves her family deeply. And Jerry, he is shy and he is gentle and you know that. And now he's afraid of you. It's you. Melly is extremely intelligent, making her fun to watch as she manipulates and outsmarts her competitors. Campaigns can be so stressful. And I guess, I guess my body just couldn't handle it. And I lost our baby. As she stands as a rival to the show's main character, Olivia Pope, Melly's bad side is sure to garner criticism from viewers, as she is willing to do anything to stay in power. I truly believe that he is the best person to be president of the United States, and I couldn't let our loss stand in the way of that. However, she also has a good side, taking care of her husband and giving up her former career for him. She's a complex character, and one we love to watch develop. They didn't want to come, and so I told them they didn't have to. Deal with it. Number 9. John Luther, Luther. I know, I'm making a leap. It's a little leap, though. It's more of a hop. John Luther, played convincingly by English actor Idris Elba, is a detective chief inspector for the Metropolitan Police Service. But like most memorable anti-heroes on TV today, he is willing to go above and beyond to apprehend criminals. I'm not asking for your approval, sir. Just your silence. He's often breaking the law himself in order to arrest wrongdoers by, for example, planting evidence. What you're doing is wrong. Yeah, I know. Why do it then? Because it's right. Despite his questionable practices, he gets results, as Luther is a fantastic cop, but one who is also haunted by the realities of his profession. He's a modern badass, but flawed and ultimately relatable. Hello, John. Hello. You may be very, very clever, but you're wrong. There is love in the world. So you lose. Number 8. Abed Nadir, Community. We should write a screenplay together. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. This show follows the often ridiculous and surreal adventures of students in a community college, the best among them being Abed, the movie-loving pop culture genius. Whoa! That's a good Jeff. How'd you do that? 10% Dick Van Dyke, 20% Sam Malone, 40% Zach Braff and Scrubs, and 30% Hilary Swank and Boys Don't Cry. Zach Braff? Sorry. It's always hilarious watching Troy and Abed's interactions, with the latter's constant pop culture references adding solid meta humor to the show, which is greatly appreciated by fellow film buffs. You know what this means. We've gone mainstream. Initiate Protocol Omega. Abed is also the heart of the group, often providing an ear or a shoulder for his friends when the plot gets sentimental. The universe is an endless, raging sea of randomness. Our job isn't to fight it, but to weather it together on the raft of life, a raft held together by those few rare, beautiful things that we know to be predictable. Here at Watch Mojo, we just have to put a fellow movie lover on the list. Let me give you ladies the grand tour. Bathroom, kitchen, who cares? And this is my scale model of the rolling boulder scene from Raiders with actual rolling boulder. Ooh. Yeah. Adios, oh. Oh. Number seven, Hannah Horvath, Girls. 
I want a lake house. I, I work hard. I, I want to sit by a fucking lake. You deserve a die. Lake. Like Flaubert and a Garrett. Don't look at me. Lena Dunham's authentic performance as Hannah has captivated audiences since the show premiered and instantly put the young comedian on the map. Oh my god. Okay, I knew it was her. Because that girl wears floral capris, like her hymen's still intact, but yeah. she was such a slut in such oh, a she, big way. In a huge way. She used to do this thing where she would literally just like rip the condom off. Hannah often makes viewers and other characters on the show uncomfortable with her honesty and quirky personality. But that is a testament to her impact. Like, how can you be so sure about something like that? Like, Adam wants to move in with me, and I can't even tell if that's good or bad. She doesn't always bring the laughs, however, as we also get a look at her deep emotional and mental problems, including her battles with OCD and her relationship with Adam. You are finding good. 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 She is one of the true strong female characters on television, and one that is not afraid to take chances. I'm not hungry. Okay. Did you hear that, Mom? I said I'm not hungry. She heard that. Maybe I'm anorexic. Oh, God, maybe we should see another specialist. Come on now. Number six, Daryl Dixon, The Walking Dead. I'm afraid of nothing. A surprise that no one saw coming, this redneck minor character from the first season of the show became a series regular and has since turned into the fan favorite. My day just gets better and better, don't it? Daryl's development has been rivaled by no one else's on the show, and it's fascinating to watch his progression from cold-hearted outsider to one of the most caring members of the group, perhaps even more so than leader Rick Grimes. No, Merle never did nothing like that his whole life. I gave us a chance. Behind the tough, crossbow-wielding exterior, there's a heart and personality that's won over audiences worldwide. You're gonna be the last man standing. Number five, Gloria Delgado Pritchett, Modern Family. Enough complaining! You can't be each all day because you're not at the beach all day! Come on! The ensemble cast of this show boasts many entertaining characters, including goofball Phil Dunphy, but Gloria is perhaps the best of them all. Oh, that's so sweet. You can take Joe to his baby class. Gloria, I think he already knows how to be a baby. I love you, but I can't laugh at that again. Her accent will at times be the cause of hilarious situations, but she is also a fiercely protective mother and wife, making for not only laugh out loud scenes, but also touching family moments, which is what the show is all about. Come on, coach, you gotta take that kid out. You wanna take him out? How about I take you out? Honey, honey. Why don't you worry about your son? He spent the first half with his hand in his pants. Equally funny is her rough, gang-ridden upbringing in Colombia, which she often references, and it makes her a truly unique and memorable character in a show full of them. You lie. Huh? I'm Colombian. I know a fake crime scene when I see one. Number four, Suzanne Crazy Eyes Warren, Orange is the New Black. Are you a real woman, Chapman, a real grown woman? I'm not like all these other girls around here. I can't waste my time with these silly bitches. I need a real woman. In this drama about an all-female minimum security prison, there are bound to be some unique characters for protagonist Piper Chapman to contend with, but the most memorable is Crazy Eyes herself. We should play charades sometime, Dandelion. We'd make great partners. Not wives. Suzanne is a tragic figure, as she despises her nickname and often goes along with what others want just to make them proud, usually with dark and dangerous results. Can I ask you one more question? Yeah, of course. How come everyone calls me Crazy Eyes? But while she is undoubtedly heartbreaking, Crazy Eyes also elicits some of the show's biggest laughs, albeit awkward ones, when she does things like urinate directly on the floor. She gives us an emotional roller coaster to watch and enjoy. Before I met you, the sun was like a yellow grape. But now it looked like fire in the sky. Why? Because you light a fire inside me. Number three, Detective Rustin Rust Cole, True Detective. You know me, I don't see the connection between two dead cats and a murdered woman. Then I'm from Texas. This is the small screen role that made us start taking Matthew McConaughey seriously again, 
as he was fantastic beside Woody Harrelson's Marty Hart as one half of a duo of homicide detectives. Rust is an extremely gifted detective, often to the point of mockery from his colleagues, but underneath the robotic exterior lies a deeply troubled man. Still not over the death of his daughter, Rust is a nihilist. But his pessimistic attitude leads to some fantastic philosophical discussions. We are things that labor under the illusion of having a self, this accretion of sensory experience and feeling, programmed with total assurance that we are each somebody, when in fact everybody's nobody. His character helped elevate the show beyond your typical detective story and will be remembered for years to come. I'll come through for you on this tonight. I gotta know you're gonna hook me up. Cause I got a real job I'm supposed to be doing. Number two, Francis J. Frank Underwood, House of Cards. Check, check, check. When it comes to the White House, you not only need the keys in your back pocket, you need the gatekeeper. The first time we see Frank, he is staring directly into the camera while he strangles a dog to death. What? Moments like this require someone who will act, who will do the unpleasant thing, the necessary thing. To say that's a memorable entrance for one of TV's most unforgettable anti-heroes would be an understatement. Frank will do anything to reach the presidency, including murder, which makes his ascension both captivating and terrifying to watch. I want to believe you, Francis. I know you <gasps> part Richard III and part Macbeth, Kevin Spacey's Frank lets the audience in on his ingenious schemes, making us feel a deeper connection to the character. Did you think I'd forgotten you? Perhaps you hoped I had. Frank also helped usher in the Netflix originals, beginning a new and revolutionary way to watch television. For those of us climbing to the top of the food chain, there can be no mercy. There is but one rule, hunt or be hunted. Before we unveil our most memorable character, here are a few honorable mentions. I'm not crazy, I know what I saw. Look. Look, she grabbed my ankles. I was trying to get out. I could learn something from you. You have every right to feel like, um, um, what was it you said this morning? A proud mama hen, sir. A proud mama hen. Are we to be friends then? We are allies, my dear, which can be a good deal more effective. <laughs> That's because Mike McClintock there threw him into the Potomac River. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, it seems like with that cornstarch tweet, we were, we were hoist by our own retard. Uh, it says you've got problems with him. Maybe you liked his wife, maybe you don't like his drinking. How can you possibly know about the drinking? Shot in the dark, good one though. Number one, Tyrion Lannister, Game of Thrones. Don't fight for your king! Don't fight for his kingdoms. Don't fight for honor, don't fight for glory. Don't fight for riches because he won't get any. With perhaps the biggest ensemble cast in television, this show packs in many memorable characters, including fan favorite Daenerys Targaryen. But Tyrion's brains and pathos win out. Nothing prettier than watching sailors burn alive. Yes, great victory for your people. Tyrion is a very intelligent individual, often spouting the most quotable and philosophical statements in the series. There's our brave men knocking at our door. Let's go kill them! He's also deeply human, ridiculed by everyone for his dwarfism, and never respected the way he deserves. But he shows unrelenting bravery in the face of adversity nonetheless. I'm guilty of being a dwarf. You are not on trial for being a dwarf. Oh. I've been on trial for that my entire life. While his brother Jamie is getting better, Tyrion remains arguably the most noble and heartfelt man in all of Westeros, which makes him an all-around fantastic character. I did not kill Joffrey, but I wish that I had. Watching your vicious bastard die gave me more relief than a thousand lying whores. Do you agree with our list? You got some self-loathing to do this morning, that's fine. But it ain't worth losing your hands over. What television character from the 2010s is your favorite? For more ranked top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. 
Want to build a cardboard submarine? Get out of my brain. <laughs>